Oh, well, I would say that uh, infectious diseases, when I first started training, was really more about tropical diseases like dengue, you know, typhoid fever, uh, cholera, etc. I think what uh, we eventually then moved towards was uh, really hospital-based infectious diseases. Um, and I think that actually developed uh, because of the uh, actually insights and the visions of many other uh, internists like Professor Ong Yong Yao, um, rheumatologists like Professor Feng Bao Si, and um, other doctors like Professor Chi Yam Cheng, who actually uh, helped develop the practice of infectious diseases as it currently is. Um, I would say that uh, in terms of uh, when we first started, of course it was quite difficult, you know, because um, most of the doctors practicing in the hospitals were all treating infections. I think that we really got quite a lot of traction in the beginning uh, with mainly the surgeons, the orthopedic surgeons in particular who needed help with uh, some of their uh, wound infections, their implant infections, and also the doctors who were looking after immunocompromised patients like the hematologists and the rheumatologists. You know, so I think that's kind of, that, that's how it subsequently developed. Um, I think for most of the hospitals itself, like the hospital administrators, you know, and most of the other uh, uh, doctors involved in hospital-based practice, I think really emerging infections like uh, Nipah in 1999, SARS, um, really put uh, one aspect of uh, infectious diseases into the forefront in which you know, they had to, we had to impose a lot of infection control measures. Uh, and I think that's some of the sort of highlights of what has happened really in the past uh, 30 years that I've been involved in infectious diseases. Well, I would say that for a uh, hospital-based type of uh, infections, there was uh, a lot of implant infections. Um, that really needed uh, to be managed much better. Um, there was, at that time, still a lot of HIV infections, patients presenting very late in their illness and uh, having severe infections uh, requiring, you know, ICU care, prolonged hospitalizations. So uh, certainly that was a, a large focus of uh, our work in the, in the much earlier days. I think that's, uh, that, that management have, uh, has, of course, evolved. I think we have a much more formalized training for most of our infectious disease physicians. So that, that has helped a lot. Uh, and of course, I'm delighted that uh, many of uh, the second generation infectious disease physicians have gone on to do a lot more research. Uh, they have had many, uh, many of them have had added qualifications such as yourself in public health. Um, many of them have also had PhDs. Uh, so I think that that would really move uh, infectious disease uh, forward. Well, I suppose with uh, any new infection, there's always fear. A and of course, HIV in particular uh, was always thought to be uh, uh, really focused on certain uh, groups of the population. And as a result, you know, there was a fair amount of discrimination. Right? Uh, but infections in general are indiscriminate you know, and infect everybody. And so, um, yes, there was a lot of fear. Um, and there was a lot of discrimination, not just the general public, but also, unfortunately, amongst 
some of our healthcare workers who weren't quite aware of uh, transmission of disease in in the, these sort of patients and um, really in the late uh, 1980s and early 1990s um, really HIV patients were pretty much isolated uh, into a separate facility at CDC um, they even developed their own ward, their own ICU uh, and, and I think that thankfully we have managed to change that approach um, I would say a lot of it is uh, education. I think that's really quite important. Uh, so we really need to plug at both public education and also education of our healthcare workers. And I think that has moved along quite nicely, especially for the healthcare workers. I think we hardly have any discrimination in the medical care of uh, uh, patients who are living with HIV infection. Treatment, of course, has uh, been a great help huh? because uh, with treatment, they can uh, live pretty much normal lives and, of course, treatment reduces transmission. I think we have to accept that emerging infections will be the norm. You know, and Singapore being such a global hub we have to expect that uh, there will be imported infections that come into Singapore. And I think we need to have a proper perspective of that and uh, be able to manage really whatever comes uh, to us. And um, I think we have a great uh, surveillance uh, system in Singapore that has been built up. And I think that we can use that really to uh, control infections really early and prevent ongoing transmission within Singapore. But I really don't think we can uh, expect that we will not have any emerging infections in Singapore. I mean, lumped into emerging infections would be the growing resistance of uh, many of our pathogens and I would say antibiotic resistant organisms will always be a problem and I do think that we can uh, continue to do much better to try to uh, manage that. I think that part really has uh, quite a large, uh, um, quite a multi-sectoral multi and multi-dimensional aspect to it where we really need to use our antibiotics better, you know improve our infection control? Um, I would say that you know, the first aspect would really be that um, the infectious disease physician needs to be a person of science. Um, uh, I think that science is important and research is important uh, and we really have to base uh, much of our work uh, the policies that we make, the treatment that we prescribe to our patients uh, based on science. So I think science is very important. Uh, I think secondly, uh, we need to look more humanistically uh, at how we treat patients. Um, as I mentioned, uh, infections are indiscriminate. Uh, they cause infections in everybody. Um, and that, it's important, but it also induces fear. And with fear comes discrimination. So I think that we need to make sure our policies do not discriminate uh, against any group, uh, much as we would like to control infections. You know, so I think that that's one, uh, uh, another aspect that I hope uh, will be a hallmark of uh, uh, any infectious disease physician in uh, Singapore, you know. Um, and I suppose that, uh, as always, there's always a, a moral, moral and ethical aspect to what we do. Uh, as I mentioned, that uh, there's always this worry about discrimination, about patients, about 
person A being infected. Uh, obviously, confidentiality is an important aspect, you know. Um, so, I would say that uh, really that, that needs to be considered carefully. And, uh, but I, I would say that we have things in place in Singapore and uh, I, I remain confident that uh, uh, infectious disease in Singapore will evolve uh, and uh, improve rapidly uh, to cope with the increasing demands in the future.